Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you're watching in the world. It's my pleasure to be here today to share with you some data and information I've learned from taking apart some QD-enabled displays. What you see here is a peek inside of a QD OLED display with a unique pixel layout, and I'll go even deeper into what that technology entails, as well as many other TVs that I've taken apart. My name is Peter Palamaki. I'm the owner and chief scientist at Palamaki Consulting. We work with companies around the world, solving big problems at the nanoscale, often in quantum dot and display technology, but in other areas as well, especially nanomaterials and chemistry. Feel free to connect with me on various social channels or reach out if you're interested in learning more. Most of the information you're gonna see in today's talk, you can find on my YouTube channel, Nano um, I've taken a liking to getting TVs and tearing them apart and learning a little bit more about what's on the inside and sharing that with the world. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today. We'll start off with the standard QD film approach, quantum dot films in LCD displays. And then we'll move on to QDs and phosphor combined in LCD displays. And finally, a QD OLED, which is the newest way that quantum dots are being implemented in display technology. And we'll take a look at how that's done. So first, the QD film in an LCD. This is by far the most common way that quantum dots are implemented in a display. You can see in the diagram here that quantum dots exist as a plastic film in the backlight unit. This is in front of the blue LEDs typically. These blue LEDs excite the quantum dot film, which down converts the blue into red and green light. And then there's various other layers, optical layers in this film stack before the light reaches the liquid crystal and finally color filters and out the front of the display. In my work here, taking apart TVs, there's a few tools that I find very useful and important. Um, along with various loops and magnifiers and um, microscopes, I also use a mini USB spectrometer from Avantes uh, that has a fiber optic cable, so it's very easy to measure spectrum in, in hard to reach locations. I also always carry with me a UV flashlight, and this is for illuminating or exciting the quantum dots or other phosphors material so that I can measure a good spectrum. Also handy is a pair of blue blocking glasses Number one, for safety, uh, because these displays are really bright. And number two, you can actually help get, it can help you get better spectrum by eliminating some of the blue signal, depending on what you're trying to measure. So you see in this picture here, I'm measuring a QD film by exciting it with a UV flashlight, measuring with my spectrometer. And so you see a signal from the UV flashlight around 395 nanometers and two quantum dot emission peaks, red and green. And those emission peaks we measure by full width half max. This is one of the metrics by which the industry measures the quality of light that's coming from these quantum dots. That's the peak width essentially. So in this example, the green is positioned at 537 nanometers with a full width half max of 27.5 and the red peak at 621 nanometers with a full width half max of 23 nanometers. These are very narrow, very good um, emission spectrum from quantum dots. So I'll jump right in here by showing you a video um, of taking apart the various optical films inside a display. So you can see the LCD in the background there that's already been removed from this 55 or 65 inch display. And then we'll remove a few other optical films. These are polarizing films, light recycling films, often called BEFs or DBEFs. And you can see as we remove more and more of them, we get more blue light coming out. And what the next one is here is actually the quantum dot film. You can see it's a very flexible plastic sheet. Uh, it's hard to tell the color in this image, but that was the quantum dot film there. And then finally, you can see here a full array local dimming backlight. This is a backlight with, uh, I believe, 96 different LEDs or 96 zones. I forget which, but this is the plastic diffuser. This is a much more rigid part. And then we have this array of LEDs in the back of the unit. So as we take this TV apart, we can measure the optical spectrum. You can see some pictures here of those various layers, LED diffuser, QD film, and brightness enhancing films. And when we do that and measure the spectrum, as we remove films, we can learn something about how the light behaves in the back of this TV. So when we have just the blue backlight unit, 